What's going on, Dolph fans? It is your boy, Dylan, and I am intending to make two videos today uh, for you. This one is going to be because the Dolphins did a trade, and then the next one I'm going to make is going to be a quick hit scouting report video, one of my week four videos. So check that out uh, as well. I'll be making that literally right after I make this video about the trade that the Dolphins did. So let's go ahead and get into it. They actually traded a player away, so let's talk about it. So as you can see, thoughts on the Grant trade. I mean, most of you probably already are aware of this, but the Miami Dolphins have moved on from one of their longest tenure players when they sent Grant to the Chicago Bears. That is Jakeem Grant. Judging by an unscientific survey of the reaction on Twitter, the Miami Dolphins' decision to trade receiver returner Jakeem Grant to the Chicago Bears on Tuesday was a popular move with the fan base. Make that very popular. For being honest, it also seemed over-the-top harsh. Um... You know, we'll get to his thoughts, uh, and then, you know, I'll get to my thoughts on that. But I want to talk about the specifics a little bit more first. So, and, and he mentions what the specifics are. There's no disputing the validity of the trade, even if the Dolphins only got a 2023 sixth round pick in return, because it was clear that Grant had outlived his usefulness with the Dolphins. So, um, well, I'll just say my piece basically all right now. So, as you guys know, you know, I liked Grant. I was a fan of his, you know, when we did pick him. Um, I didn't necessarily want him, uh, but when they decided to take him or whatever, I was like, oh, okay. I looked, you know, back at his some of his tape and stuff. I liked what he did. Um, he was, you know, a smaller guy. He's undersized, and so he was a bit of an underdog, and I like underdog stories. Uh, and I just liked his attitude and, and um, you know, all of that stuff, right? So I always rooted for him. I always liked him. But, you know, keeping it real, um, you know, he's had some issues with holding on to the ball. Um, if we're looking at his entire career here, that includes the kicking game uh, and not just as a receiver. And I totally agree, though, that he did outlive his time with the Dolphins. And so it makes... You know, it's no surprise whatsoever that they did end up trading him away. I was a little surprised that, you know, it ended up happening mid-season and that they got anything for him. Um, you know, so good on them to get something. But let's also keep it real that a sixth round pick in 2023, that's got very little value. Especially because if this season doesn't turn around and Brian Flores and Chris Greer get fired because it's a, you know it's a shit down the toilet fucking kind of season, then they won't even be the ones to use the pick. Uh, but, you know, whatever. It is what it is, and they, they got it, and, you know, good. It, like I said, you know, before when they were doing cuts, I said that I would have cut Jakeem Grant um, and had Kirk Merritt on the 53-man roster, right, when we were doing cutdowns. So, I, so, you know, the world is nuanced. I like him, and he obviously brings special things to the return game, when he does get his hands on the ball. Um, but, you know, it's not a surprise and he definitely outlived it. Now, there's one other thing, though, that I want to mention before I go ahead and, you know, continue on and rattle off the rest of this here is, is that the only major concern I have with this whole situation, though, is, is that now, obviously, that means Jalen Waddle's going to get more time as a returner. Is he going to return all the punts? Maybe not. They may use Noah or somebody else back there as well. But there is a high probability now that Jalen Waddle ends up being the one who takes significant amount of snaps as a returner. So, and But let's be honest. He did also muff a punt already in the return game. So let's just keep it real. It is what it is. Is he going to continue to do it? Uh, I hope not. Probably not. But he did already, to this point, muff one. That's actually not the major, the big point here, though. The big point that I have is, is the, and he's actually dropped some passes, too, in the receiving game. But the big point that I have here is, is that with every additional rep that he takes in the kicking game, the return game, that increases the probability that he gets injured somehow. And you guys know, I don't want him being used on special teams and in the return game because he's not a player we can afford to lose even though they don't know how to use him properly 
I mean, I totally get that. They're completely misusing them, and that's one of the problems with this organization and this coaching staff right now. But um, we can't afford to lose them. We just can't. Not with you know Will Fuller going down now. Jakeem Grant is traded, so that does actually take away from some of the depth there. Uh, not that it's really impactful, but you get what I'm saying, right? And um, you know, some of these other guys also being fragile, like Parker, Preston Williams still hasn't fucking done shit. Albert Wilson hasn't really done shit. So you get what I'm saying? Um, anyway, so that's my piece on it. Let me just go ahead and breeze through the rest of this so we can get Alan Pupar's uh, views and thoughts. Despite his annual pronouncement to the contrary, Grant always was and almost assuredly was, uh, almost assuredly, he does this sometimes, uh, uh, always will be just a returner at the NFL level because his hands simply aren't dependable enough as a wide receiver. Yeah, okay. That was a little bit laborious to get through. Not to mention that his lack of size makes him a major durability question with extended playing time. And as you also see, you know, in moments when that, you know, plays get blown up like that jet sweep, he gets a little ragdolled too because he's small. He's small. And his value diminished greatly once the NFL decided to change the kickoff rule to move the kicking spot from the 30 to the 35, dramatically increasing the number of touchbacks in the process. Against the Indianapolis Colts, for example, Grant didn't return a single kickoff because all six of Rodrigo Blankenship's kickoffs ended up in the end zone. And that's fair. And that's true, right? His value did drop. And that's part of the reason why they only got a late sixth round, a sixth round pick in 2023. Um, so that's, you know, important context too, of course. So when Grant muffed a punt in the third quarter to give the Colts a free three points, two weeks after losing a fumble near the buff Buffalo goal line on a rare snap on offense, it almost felt like the writing was on the wall. Yeah, it, I mean, like I said, it was it was definitely, you know, it was coming sooner rather than later. Remember, the Dolphins have seven wide receivers on the roster. Because of that, Preston Williams has ended up on the inactive list each of the past two games. And even with Fuller out with a broken finger, the Dolphins absolutely still can make do with Devontae Parker, Jalen Waddle, Albert Wilson, Matt Collins, and Williams. I mean, theoretically, they don't know how to use these guys properly. The scheming sucks. The offensive line doesn't give long enough protection. So, yeah, and none of them, none of them have really done much of anything. So uh, Parker probably has done the most with Waddle right behind him. Or, you know, depending on, I guess, which category, which stat you're looking at. Parker has more yards, but Waddle, I think, has more catches, right? So, you know, anyway. So, yeah, uh, uh, absolutely no problem with this trade. But was there really a need for all these shots Grant took on social media on his way out? Can we also not appreciate what he did accomplish with the Dolphins during his time in South Florida? Uh... It depends. I mean, it depends on who you're talking to. If you're talking to me, a nuanced individual who can, you know, look at all of the stuff, then yeah, you can you can appreciate it, right? Uh, the returns that he's had and so on and so forth. If you're some of these casual fans or these people that just ignore reality, facts and data and only like to go with, you know, the narratives and, and stuff that they like, well, a lot of fans just like to harp on his, on his missteps. But anyway... Are we forgetting about the five kick returns for touchdowns, which, oh, by the way, are a franchise record? You remember those, right? Like the punt return last year against the Los Angeles Rams, which helped the Dolphins win in Tua Tungavailoa's NFL starting debut, despite the fact he threw for only 93 yards. Yeah, I mean, look, real quick, just a side note, I love Tua, and I told you guys, for me, it's not the player or the person, it's the potion that's been the issue. But, you know... People say that he's got a 7-3 and three record, and he does. But we got to keep it honest. A lot of that record came because of... Spe those wins came because of special teams and defense to propel him there, right? And then, of course, there was the, 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 the Raiders game last year where they ended up benching him, and Ryan Fitzpatrick technically won the game. Look, it's not a knock on Tua. He definitely has a 7-3 and three record. But, I mean, if we're, you know, if we're keeping it real with ourselves... He was helped to that in large part by the defense and special teams, Jakeem Grant being part of that. Anyway, just a minor side note. Uh, or maybe the kickoff for... And that's uh, just real quick, too. That's not to say that 
uh, that's not to give fuel to the to the side of the conversation that he's like not better than Jacoby Brissett or any of that bullshit. He's clearing away the fuck. And obviously, last season he was only at sixty percent health. Never should have been in the game to begin with, et cetera, et cetera. So just so I make sure that that is clear. Or maybe the kickoff return against the Tennessee Titans in the 2018 season opener forever known for being the longest game in NFL history. Fact is, yes. Uh, where, where am I? Oh, fact is, yes, Grant dropped some passes. Yes, he muffed some punts and had some fumbles, but that shouldn't erase the good things he did. Let's put it this way. If Grant isn't the greatest return returner in franchise history, he belongs in the conversation. Grant's five returns for touchdowns are two more than Ted Ginn Jr. and Freddie Solomon, who are tied for second on the team's all-time list. But maybe you like Ginn better as a returner. Okay, that's fine, but don't forget that Ginn was the ninth overall pick in the 20, 2007 draft. Grant joined the Dolphins as a sixth round pick in 2016, and it says here that became uh, became a tremendous value pick for the franchise. He doesn't belong in the same category as Egg Newman, Doug Betters, and Reggie Roby when it comes to the all-time great Dolphin six-round picks, but he might be right up there with Jeremiah Bell near the top of the second tier. As we wrote earlier Tuesday, Grant probably lasted a bit longer with the Dolphins the most analysts projected, particularly after the additions of Fuller and Waddle in the offseason combined with the return of Wilson from his opt-out, and his departure is absolutely no surprise in the least. Dolphins fans have the right to be happy he's gone because of his recent struggles, but they also shouldn't forget about his past successes. All right, and that's good enough on that one. Like I said, I am going to make a separate video, which is going to be my scouting report video uh, for one of the games this week. It's going to be the Baltimore game. I'll be doing that next, so check out for that coming up right after. I'm literally going to make it right after this video, but I did want to make a separate video talking about the Grant trade. All right, with that, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys appreciate my perspective. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comment section. And, of course, as always, follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see you all soon. Fins up.